shows the construction of the concrete slabs of two keys perpendicular to the longitudinal dock, which will serve as a berth for boats up to 200 meters long. It will be constructed with a self-launching type formwork that allows casting an entire segment of the slab in every cycle. Description of the construction method of the in-situ slab. The self-launching formwork was resolved by two different systems. First, the central spans use a casting platform system, which are positioned on top of special supports on the piles. These supports have rollers to enable to move forward to the successive sets and wedge jacks to fix the level of the beams once the formwork is leveled. To put each support at the correct level, the assistance of manually operated hydraulic devices is necessary. To form the cross beams, a system of retrievable floating caissons between beams was designed. These caissons remain fastened to the formwork and are subsequently released into the water to be retrieved and placed in the following set. The second system is used in the lateral spans. Due to the reduced space between the capping beam and the water level, it is not possible to use the same system as for the inside spans. Therefore, a system that combines the buoyancy of the unit for translation and fixing supports to the piles with vertical threaded dividag rods during casting was designed. The floating units are equipped with a passive and active flotation system. The adjustable lateral panels with spindles are placed on these elements, which enables to align the formwork panels. Likewise, the casting was fitted with lateral gateways, with handrails for the safety of the operators. Simultaneously to the construction of the slab, the conduits which will house the connections of the key, the utility hatches and the anchoring elements for fenders and bollards will be prepared. Each set covers a distance between two pile spans. The concrete will be poured with an automatic pump from the previous set, evenly distributing the concrete to spread the weight throughout the board. Although for safety reasons, the casting is calculated to withstand uneven loads. The surface of the slab is perfectly leveled and regulated with two gradients to enable the rainwater to drain out. Description of the formwork structure. The formwork is composed of various independent modules, which can be moved forward separately. Floating outer capping beam modules. Floating inner capping beam modules. Lateral platforms. Central platforms. Swing panels. Five rows of supports. Stripping, moving and positioning of the formwork. The center platforms during the pouring of the concrete rest on six points. To make the removal of the casting easier, the mold rests on mechanical wedge jacks which steadily hold the weight of the fresh concrete. In order to remove the platform, six hydraulic jacks will be placed under the platforms, one on each support, and will be extended until reaching the formwork. At this point, the wedge jacks will be released. Then the casting will be lowered by the hydraulic jacks until leaning on the advancing rollers. In this position, the module supported over the rollers will be moved forward with the assistance of a tow truck or pulleys. The spaces between the piles where the longitudinal beams run will be formed by means of articulated folding panels. The floating modules will be towed to the new location. 
Once in place, they will be set afloat again by blowing air into the active floaters until reaching the approximate level of placement. Subsequently, by means of dividag rods, they will be placed at their final position. Once the modules are lined up, the attachment bars will be inserted and the six dividag bars will be fitted, making the last leveling adjustment. Once the formwork is positioned, the attachment bars will be pre-tensioned. Finally, the vertical panel on the exposed side will be adjusted by manually manipulating the spindles. Once the set is complete, the formwork modules will be removed. The maneuver begins with the releasing of the pre-tensioned attachment bars and their dismantling. Next, the dividag bars of the floating modules are released from the upper side of the constructed key, followed by the setting afloat of the modules and their transfer to the next position. In the case of the center platforms, the wedge jacks are released in order to lower the casting, holding the caissons in place with the assistance of cables. The structure always rests on three consecutive piles in the position that it was filled with concrete, 1.7 meters being the maximum thickness of the board on the ledges and 0.40 meters being the minimum in the spans between beams. structural joints between the spans of the board. Due to the dimensions of the completed key module, 50 meters, it will be necessary to run a concrete joint every two spans in a longitudinal direction of the pontoon. Vertical joints shall be set in relation to the horizontal plane of the slab in the area near the point of zero moment, giving continuity to the reinforcement between different sets. The concrete joints must guarantee the transmission of forces. Likewise, a treatment of these joints will be performed to ensure a good adhesion between the concretes. Joints between slab modules and joints with the longitudinal key. Every module of 50 meters is calculated to withstand the forces to which it may be subjected independently to the rest of the modules. The maximum movements expected, subjected to the birth forces, are 2 to 3 centimeters in each module. Considering the most unfavorable situations of inward and outward movements between the modules, joints capable of absorbing the differential movements will be installed. Anchoring elements for fenders and bollards. During the positioning of the formwork, the bolts of the bollards and fenders are already forecasted, vastly improving the behavior of these elements during operation. Once the slab is completed, the dock equipment, consisting of 150-ton bollards and shield fenders, capable of absorbing energy of 142 tons per lineal meter, are fitted.
Using the self-launching formwork construction methodology therefore enables the simultaneous execution of all the structural elements of the key, thereby achieving a more rigid and enduring structure and vastly improving the safety conditions during its implementation and the quality standards achieved in the final product. This method allows construction without large maritime equipment on the site, such as pontoons and cranes, which would be necessary with alternatives, such as the use of prefabricated parts. The floating system of the capping beams enables to work in areas near the tidal range, achieving an optimal surface for the placement of the dock equipment, such as shield fenders in this case. Additionally, with this method, the contractor achieves to shorten the construction deadlines, which enables the client to put the new infrastructure into service in record time.